Hey guys, welcome back to the second time Lucky Mining Channel. In today's quick video, I'm going to show you guys how to install the Flux Watchdog on your Flux node. If you do like the Flux content, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a great deal. But enough of shilling my channel, let's jump into the content. Now, before we jump onto the computer, I just wanted to go over some of the benefits and potentially shortcomings of the Flux Watchdog. Now, at least in my opinion, the biggest benefit of the Watchdog is the ability for it to send you notifications either via Discord or via Telegram in case there are issues specifically with the benchmarks. Now, if you're not familiar, Flux will benchmark the various aspects of the requirements on your Flux node and in case there are issues, the watchdog will let you know and tell you exactly what is the issue. It won't necessarily tell you how to fix it, but at least it will tell you you specifically have got an issue. Now, that is the big benefit, at least in my case. Now, the other thing that it will do in case there are new versions either of the benchmark or of Flux OS, it will also perform those updates um, and let you know that it's performed those updates. A lot of people don't necessarily like that function, but I quite like it. Now, the only shortcoming with the Flux Watchdog is in the case where it won't send you notifications in case you've got issues. Now, if the power is off on your node, it obviously won't send you any notification because it's not on. <laughs> so that is one of the things that you just need to be aware of. The other one is specifically around internet. So if you don't have an internet connection, uh, you know, it will also not send you notification. Hence, you know, if the internet is down, it won't send you anything. So those are the two shortcomings, at least there might be more and if you know of more please specify them in the comment but at least in my opinion those are the two glaring shortcomings of the watchdog which is understandable but enough of me talking about it let's show you on the computer how to install the flux watchdog okay so here we go on the computer now to set up the flux watchdog there's a couple of things that we would need now the first thing is in this specific video i'm going to show you guys how to do it via discord to get the notifications via discord and the first thing that i would need is a discord server that the notifications will go to so if you have a look at here at my discord i'm in a couple of discords here but you would need to have your own for the flux watchdog to send the notifications to now that's really simple and easy so all that i'm going to do is click this plus button here to add a server it's going to ask me you know which server it's for myself create my own community this is for me and for my friends i'll give it a name so i'll give it flux nodes as an example i'll go create now what will happen is you can see here it's now at the top it's now created the server so we will come back here but we will need to specify the webhook here at the top so i'll come back specifically to this to show you guys how to get that but um, you know that's specifically what we need in order for us to set it up correctly now, the second thing that we would need is the multi toolbox script. Now, I'll leave a link in the video description or tag it at the bottom exactly what the script is. But if you didn't know what the script is for that, I'm just going to go to the run on flux.io page. I'm going to select launch nodes. And then if I scroll a little bit down and I will have to scroll a quite a bit down um, here, you will find the actual script here. So we will come back and actually use this script. But I just want to have it handy so that I can copy and paste it. Now, the third thing that we need to do now next is to actually log into our node. Now, you can use whichever services or method that you would like to log into your node. I like using Putty. If you use the CMD or something else, you are more than happy to do that. Now, the other caution or just something that I wanted to note here is this video is more targeted to people that are hosting the nodes at their home or um, you know in a traditional vps if you're using someone or something like host nodes or goldie tech nodes or host my flux there might be a different process for you to actually get the watchdog notifications at least with host nodes i know that if you supply them your discord id you will get notifications within their discord server so that's just something to note here so specifically in my case i'm going to use putty so i'm just going to open up putty and then log on to one of my nodes so let me just open it up and then if i move this thing a little bit to the middle here and what i'm going to do now is actually log into my node so I'll cut this piece of the video out now as you guys can see here i'm logged into my actual node um, and what you would see here is i'm logged in as the root user so 
specifically for this case, I would need to change that. Now, what I'm going to do, the command that I'm going to use is issue and then the user uh, that I used when I initially set up or at least done this first step in the installation. So when you run or when you install your Flux node the first time, you would need to set up a specific user. So in my case, I just called it Cumulus. So I'm just going to change the user to the Cumulus user. So here you can see it's now saying Cumulus. So I'm now changed my user specifically to the Cumulus user. Now, the next thing that I wanted to do is actually open up the multi toolbox. Now, that's where I went to this run on Flux page. So I'm just going to copy it straight from here. So if I just take that there and copy it and then go back to Putty and then Putty is just right click to, to paste and hit enter. It will now open up the famous multi toolbox. Now, the option that we are going to use here today is the watchdog option here. So that's option four. Now, you could do this if you do the installation yourself. So there's a couple of options that you can do. I think most people use, um, you know, option one and then into option two. And the same prompts that will come up in that option is exactly what we're going to do here. Now, in my case, I didn't set it up correctly at that specific point in time. So that's why I'm going back and running option four here. Now, um, if you do it correctly the first time, you don't need to do what I'm doing now. But in case you didn't, like me, we are going to select option four. All right. So what I'm going to do is put the number four in and hit enter. So that will open up option four. Now it will take a little bit of time. It's going to say cleaning, downloading, installing Git hooks and all of the prerequisites. So just give it a little bit of time. And here you would see now it's prompting us, would you like to enable automatic updates? So as I mentioned, you know, in some cases, some people don't like the automatic updates. I do like it. So I'm going to say yes here, but you could say no here, but then you will manually need to go and do the updates. For me, that's too much work. So I'm going to say yes. It's going to ask me, would you like to enable the auto update on the daemon? In my case, I'm also going to say yes, because I don't like doing it manually and keeping up to date. So I'm just going to say yes. Now, it's also going to ask, do you want to auto update the benchmark? And again, for me, I'm going to say yes here. But, you know, there are some people that say no. But in my case, I want to be updated with everything that we have now. This is the important piece here. It's now going to ask me, do I want to enable the alerts? And that's specifically what I want to do. So I'm going to say yes. It's going to ask me, okay, please select something. And it's going to give me now two options, Discord and Telegram. I'm not really a Telegram user, so I, I like Discord. So I'm going to select Discord here. And this is now where it's going to ask me for my Discord server webhook. Now, if you remember back, we created our own server. So let me show you guys where to find that server webhook. Now, for that, I'm going to go back and open up my Discord. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you can see here, I'm in my new server that I've created on my general channel here. And you can create a separate channel if you wanted. But I'm going to go and edit the channel. As soon as I hit edit... There's an option that says integrations and within integration, I'm now going to create a webhook here. So I'm going to say create. It's now gone and created this Spidey bot webhook. So I'm going to select that and then click on the copy webhook URL. So you can see I got a message that says copied and I'm going to go back to my installation here and just hit right click to paste and hit OK. The next thing that it's going to ask is, would you like to enable nick pings on Discord? So do you want to have them pinging you in case there's an issue? And obviously I do. So I'm going to say yes. It's going to ask me, what is your Discord user ID? And this is a section that I've done incorrectly in the past. And hence, I'm redoing this specific video. Now for that, I'm going to go back to my Discord and hit escape here. And go to the user settings here at the bottom left next to my user ID. So you can see the little cog there. So I'm going to select that and then go advanced. In the advanced mode, I'm going to enable the developer mode. So I'm going to enable that and then hit escape. I'm going to go back to the user settings here. And then on my profile, I'm going to see my actual user ID here. I'm going to click on this three little dots next to my user ID and specify copy ID. Now, next up, I'm going to go back to Putty here and paste my ID in there and hit 
Okay, so that is my Discord user ID. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, and I'm just going to close this up here on the left hand side and just jump back. It's going to ask me what is the name of the node. So specifically this node, what will happen is it will tell you exactly what is the user or what is the node that's having the issue. So I'm just going to give this a name the same as what I have here. So I'm just going to say Contabo 2. Ultimately, it's now installed the watchdog. Now, unfortunately, there's no option necessarily to test it. But trust me, in case you've got issues, it will send you the notifications. Now, what will also happen, by the way, I submitted a request for improvement to at least enable at least a notification that tells you you've set it up correctly. But the Flux development team is still specifically working on that. But that's really how simple it is to set up the Flux watchdog. Now, what I'll flash up on my screen is a couple of examples of the watchdog and what it looks like in case there are issues. That's it for this video, guys. If you've liked the video, please like the video and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify in the comments what you would like me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.